This is northern Maine. Beyond the forest stretch to the northwest for more than a hundred miles, broken only by hundreds of clear blue lakes, you can find some of the best fishing in the world. Most people, when they think of Maine, think of these things first of all. Between 1930 and 1940, there were more than 6,000 farmers devoted to raising potatoes in the county. First, by use of hand and horse, and later with mechanized equipment. After many years of working the land, these farmers grew deeply attached to their home. I don't think I'd be where I am today if I hadn't learned how to work and had that work ethic. A lot of these Arista County children earned their spending money by working in the fields during the harvest time. It was the life that we knew back then, so it might have been a hard life growing up on the farm, but we didn't know any different, and we was never hungry, and we never wanted for anything. In 1946, many were asked to leave their farms. That year, 10,000 acres of land in the limestone area became home to hundreds of military personnel and their families. One of the largest and most powerful military bases in the country was about to be built. A new life for the land and those who lived on it was in the making. When the Army Corps of Engineers came in, father was informed that the military, the U.S. government was taking over the property. They made an offer and that they would have to be moved out in a certain date. They were bulldozers, bulldozing land and leveling off and so on while we were still up there. At least 75 farms and households were displaced by Loring on the original purchase. Leaving the property in limestone was very difficult for my father especially. I'm sure that it was hard for everyone else in that area also. I mean, they had homesteaded the land almost the way that father had. And some of the farmland had been in the family for two or three generations. It wasn't a happy village, shall we say. A one-of-a-kind strategic air command base had landed in the heart of the potato belt, bringing new people from all over the country who were stationed there. It wouldn't take these strangers long before they too became attached to the limestone area and its people. My family and I were strangers. We were on board this train that was taking us to our new home at Loring Air Force Base in Aroostook County. We weren't too sure we were going to like this new home we were going to, but it didn't take us long to discover what a wonderful place it is. When I first arrived, uh, I didn't know where I was at. It was a whole new experience. I'm going to Loring Air Force Base. Where is Loring Air Force Base? Limestone, Maine. Where is Limestone, Maine? When they got the assignment to Loring, they got an apology along with it for being sent way up here to the frozen north. They were dragged in here, left their heel marks in the dirt being dragged in, but they also had to be dragged out once they'd been here for a while. Didn't want to go. Loring Air Force Base was established in 1948 during the early years of the Cold War when the constant threat of nuclear war became part of everyday life in America. The country was engaged in a battle so frightening that ordinary citizens built bomb shelters and air raid drills were routine for school children. You never knew when that klaxon was going to go and when that klaxon sounded the whole world changed because she did not know what was going to happen. On the other end, you didn't know if you were going to launch one bomber or one tanker or you were going to launch the entire fleet. These are things that nobody knew. The world situation dictated what was going to happen. No matter where you was at, the airbase froze. 
everybody stopped. Everybody went to their emergency positions. To see these bombers and tankers struggling to get airborne, it's unbelievable. You sit out there with your heart in your mouth and you're praying to God, please, please, you know, break right, break left. You got the jet blast coming from them. Oh, what a, what a, what a trip. That's what the young airmen used to say, what a trip. Loring Air Force Base was built as a super base to house long-range bombers capable of carrying and delivering the A-bomb. For well over 40 years, Loring played a key role in assuring the country's safety following World War II. It had the largest capacity for weapons and fuel storage in the country. A monolithic arch roof hangar covering 150,000 square feet and standing 60 feet high was capable of housing two huge B-36s at one time. It was one of the most massive hangars in the world, and its runway measured two miles in length and 100 yards wide, making it one of the biggest ever constructed. A city within a base, it provided housing for thousands of people. It had a school, a church, a hundred-bed hospital, a fire department, a post office, and a credit union. It's basically a small town, and there aren't too many bases where a military guy can go where the colonel knows your name when he sees you, or asks you how the kids are, or, you know, is your kid playing ball this year? And the men returned time and time again and would put down Loring as a base of choice because it felt like home. If you had a problem, if you needed help, all you had to do was call Loring Air Force Base you'd have hundreds of volunteers. No questions asked, and immediate. The response was immediate. The people of Loring Air Force Base and what made them different than anywhere else I've been was integrity, pride. We knew we had a mission. We knew our mission was a deterrent force. We were here to provide that type of support to enjoy the freedom that we have today. And it was a very, very sad day when they closed the mission of Loring Air Force Base and to see the last B-52 fly over it was uh, part of your life. Part of your life is gone. The base is gone and I think people miss that. It's like somebody came down and lifted a town right out of, out of the uh, potato fields and flew away with it. Because of the base, Limestone's population had expanded from approximately 2,500 to 9,900. After the base closed, more than 8,000 people left the area, which caused many local businesses to fold, numerous housing vacancies, and increased unemployment. Residents are now working hard toward reviving the base as the economic engine that it once was. In the early 1990s, the Loring Development Authority was created to redevelop the base as a commerce center. It's a core mission. Take the buildings, redevelop the property, create jobs, create economic activity. The Loring Development Authority has several large businesses on site. A private aviation company coexists with federal and state government offices, plus a mix of other small businesses. Overall, the former base generates an estimated $60 million for the main economy. I think there's a general recognition that the business climate in Roostook County depends on the growth that has taken place here at Loring. Without that, things would be worse off uh, all around. Maine people and Roostook County people have a great reputation for hard work and good work. And it would not have been as successful as it has been if it hadn't been for the local people. There are still over 12,000 acres of farmland in Limestone, and with a mix of modern technology and business, this resilient, flexible community continues to adapt. At the same time, the welcoming hometown atmosphere remains, which could explain why so many former Air Force personnel chose to return to the area for retirement how people in the Roostick live, how they open their hearts and soul to you, you can't beat it. 
It's home to me. And I'm from great big New York City. 